Hi there, this is Safs Katola. A few weeks ago, um, I said I was going to release some brushes for Affinity Designer. And uh, this is it. This is it. I'm so excited. Um, uh, there are, uh, the pack has grown massively since then. There are now 90 brushes and I've had a lot of fun making them. So this is the file that um, you will get if you choose to download them. And uh, in the pack I've included some reference images. These are all, these are a few samples of um, the sheets I use to develop each brush and I'm just going to include those to let you, uh, to give you an idea of how I'm using them. And uh, I'm going to include uh, Affinity Designer Portrait of Vincent, Vincent van Gogh. Just to also give you an idea of how they're being used. And um, I'm, I'm also going to include this template. Now if I double click on that template we can see there is a master layer. There's a painting layer and there's a background layer and if I open that I've just set up a few background colours um, just to sort of get started. You can change these to whatever you want obviously. Um, so the idea of this template has sort of um, just developed just through using Affinity Designer. So I put I put everything in a master layer um, for a few reasons. Uh, number one, uh, it just obviously makes it much easier to add global effects to everything. If you want to change, you know, the color of your, if you want to change whatever, of your whole image. You just add it to that master layer. Easy done. Blah blah blah. The other reason is that as far as I can see in Affinity Designer, this is how you flip things. Flip horizontal, flip vertical. Um, now you can flip individual strokes, you can flip layers, um, but flipping the canvas as you do in other apps, as I'm used to, um, was sort of possibly proving a bit tricky. And I'll just show you what I mean. So at the moment, I've got these background layers. And you can see that I've extended them way beyond the bounds of the canvas. Uh, and I've done that for a reason. But I'll show you what happens if they're not extended beyond the bounds of the canvas. Um, so they're not now and if I paint a few strokes that go do go beyond the bounds of that canvas like this you can see that they extend way out so when I come to flipping my canvas if I want to just flip the canvas rather than an individual stroke or a layer that's going to flip unevenly so the most obvious answer to me was just to do this. Make those big, much bigger than the canvas, so that when it comes, when I come to flipping that master layer, that's what I expect to see. That's what I'm used to seeing. Um, so that's that. Easy peasy. Painting layer, this is where I will start all my painting. And I'm um, after this little overview, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run a little video, speed it up of choosing each brush and doing a few strokes with them, just to give you an idea. Always helps to see things rather than have them explained, really. Um, so that's that. But I just wanted to quickly mention uh, the way I'm the way I'm painting in Affinity Designer. I usually, what I usually tend to do is use long continuous scumbly strokes sort of thing. But you can see with vector curves, that has its place, but it's not what you expect from, you know, using other painting type apps. Um, so I've sort of 
just automatically adapted the way I do paint. So rather than using long continuous strokes, I sort of tend to do that, tend to kind of go, you know, single strokes at a time. Um, and it's also made me more organ organized in the layers. Uh, I soon found that, you know, <laughs> I very easily start start making layers for different sections of the painting and stuff and it just comes automatically after a while and there's another thing there look that stroke has a hook on the end and I do that quite a lot some days I don't know why um, but if that happens too much if that happens too much just increase this stabilizer length a bit and that'll smooth your strokes out more um, and I think that's about it. The rest, you're all amazing painters. You know how to figure it out for yourselves. Um, no, that's not it. This is uh, an edit. Uh, I've just come come back in here because there was something else I wanted to mention. Opacity. Um, there are there's no way to blend these strokes um, because they're vector curves, obviously. So I tend to use opacity and what I find easiest is using this colour opacity in the colour box. I don't really know the difference between that and this one up here, the global opacity, but I just find that that's easier to kind of reach for when you're mid-painting kind of thing. Like that. Yeah. And... Um, uh, a lot of these brushes, if you double click on them, they've also got some kind of dynamics built in. And to use that, you just click on the controller and choose a method. I'm, I'm choosing pressure. Whoops, sorry. Pressure. And you can change those defaults to anything you like, really. Um, and that's it, yeah, opacity. It's nice build-up of very complex layers very easily. I really like the way this app works. Um, and that is the end of my edit. On to the next section. Thank you. I'll just play now play a video of running through all these at great speed so you don't get too bored um, and I hope you enjoy them please buy the pack please enjoy them I've there are 90 brushes now I've set them at 5p each that's four pound fifty altogether um, I think that's I think that's a, a pretty good price you get some lovely effects with them uh, if you buy them and you enjoy them please let me know and spread the word thank you bye <laughs>